Okay, now we're going to talk about some of the tools and techniques uh, that are available uh, to uh, work in agile and traditional project management styles um, and are also very helpful in emergency management uh, uh, more broadly. So there are a number of tools and techniques out there for managing projects and in all these different areas such as scope and schedule, communications, quality and cost and, and others. Um, but for example, uh, to help manage the scope of a project, um, we've talked about the work breakdown structure as, as a tool and technique for defining a uh, scope. Um, but you know, project charters, um, scope statements, um, the, the sprint backlog uh, defines the scope for a sprint. So these are all um, tools and techniques that can be helpful uh, for defining uh, the scope for a team. Um, for, for schedule, uh, we mentioned you know, uh, the Gantt chart and, and network diagrams, uh, you, like uh, what we showed with the critical path method. Uh, so these are all helpful in figuring out um, how long tasks take and what order they need to go in and ultimately you know, how to put together a, a full uh, project uh, schedule. Uh, it, for communications, of course, there's uh, a lot of tools out there that are super important uh, to keep in touch with your team and your stakeholders and your suppliers and, and stuff like that. Um, but uh, you know, meetings and reports, uh, uh, email, instant messaging, um, and uh, virtual meetings, that, that kind of stuff is all uh, really important for making sure communications are flowing. For quality, uh, managing the quality of, of outputs uh, for a project. There's a lot of interesting tools that are available for you know, detecting uh, errors or, or issues in, in the manuf manufacturing or in the production of uh, software or data or something like that. So you could use you know, uh, cause and effect diagrams. Uh, we often use flow diagrams extensively in our work uh, to figure out, you know, how uh, systems need to be designed uh, or, or, or data pipelines need to be put together, that kind of thing. So these are all, you know, tools that we use to help us manage, uh, you know, quality in this case, but our, our projects better. Um, cost as well, of course, there are uh, spreadsheets and burn down charts and earn value management systems. Um, there's a return on investment technique and, and lots of other kind of financial uh, calculations that can be done to help uh, a team and a project manager ensure that uh, they're meeting their, their cost goals. And, uh, and so, you know, this gives you just a little overview to be thinking about, um, you know, how, how to, you know, leverage all, all the tools out there. And, and honestly, you know, in, in our experience, I think being creative is really the, the most important thing. You know, drawing things, you know, problem solving, uh, trying something out. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways to handle all of these areas and there's no right answer to this. So I would say use anything you can get your hands on and give it a try, see if it helps you to, to manage these, these kinds of things better in your projects. Yeah, and um, so virtual diagramming and collaboration is a great way to um, engage your team and engage your stakeholders and to sort of get everyone on the same page, especially before starting out on a project. And um, now more than ever, I mean, in COVID times, we have to do that virtually and that's a major challenge. And so um, one tool that I definitely would recommend is called Miro. Um, there are others. One is uh, Google Jamboard. There are these tools where you can do your project planning, scoping, diagramming, whiteboarding um, virtually, and there, it's interactive and you can kind of see what everyone else is doing on the page. Um, there's a lot of templates. So if you're having a whiteboarding session and um, or you're having a sprint planning session or a retrospective, you can sort of 
pre-select some of these predefined um, whiteboard templates that you all sort of work from. You can add sticky notes, you can add labels, you can draw, you can add text, you can change color. There's really, a, there's no limit to what you can do in these uh, boards in terms of like what you can also do on an actual whiteboard with markers. So um, it's really excellent for distributed teams um, where everyone needs to collaborate online in an interactive project. It's great for uh, planning before kicking off a project. Um, and we've done this for several of projects that uh, we're involved in and it's had great success. So. And um, so one, one good tool for Agile is called the Kanban method. And it was invented to optimize engineering processes. Um, it's a visual technique. So your work items are presented either as sticky notes or cards or um, written on a whiteboard that sort of lives in the room that everyone's working in um, to give everyone on the team a visual representation of progress um, from start to finish throughout your project. And that would be called the Kanban board. Um, there are some web tools that you can use for this. So um, Trello, uh, Microsoft Planner, and I think we'll, we'll get to the next slide here in a moment. So you can do it um, physically on a wall or you can do it virtually through a tool on the web. Um, and as your tasks are uh, moved from a to-do list to whether they're in progress or um, in like this image, you can also have a testing phase. And once it passes the testing phase, then you move it into done. Um, with our case study, with our work that we do at FEMA, we have a, a backlog that we call on the radar. Um, and then there's a, a sprint to-do list. So at the beginning of the sprint, everyone on the team moves over their cards that they intend to tackle over the next two week sprint cycle. And then as the tasks are completed, they're moved into a done column. And anyone on the team, anyone on the, the, the greater federal staff team can go in at any time and visually see the tasks that we have chosen to take on or that we've been given um, for that specific sprint um, and where they are in the process of in progress or completed. Um, and uh, yeah, anything to add, Rob? Yeah, I guess, um, you know, and the whole idea with this is to, you know, simplify the, the process for the team members to really focus on sort of, uh, you know, what needs to be done? What are we working on? What did we just complete? You know, uh, it's easy to get lost with lots of activities and team members and due dates and all this stuff. And you know, the the whole point of this is to really, you know, oversimplify it so everybody can rally around a couple of things and all understand, you know, what they're working on together at a given time, and and so that you can visually see that as well. So, um, you know, I think that to lends itself uh, to the emergency management kind of uh, scenario, which can be chaotic and, and hard to kind of remember where you are in the process. Um, this is super helpful to, to get everybody on the same page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so depending on what agency you work for, what kind of networks you're dealing with and firewalls that you have in, that you're involved with, um, you might have limited access to these resources. But um, with, for example, with FEMA, we're now working in Microsoft Planner, um, but we used to use Trello for our Kanban task management. Um, but these are some examples of uh, the online web versions of a Kanban board. Um, but they're convertible into other things. So for example, on the bottom left, JIRA, um, you can create your Kanban board and then convert it into a Gantt chart, assuming that your tasks have start and end dates um, in the cards. And um, you can, there's all kinds of features with these. You can add labels, you can export to CSV, um, you can assign tasks to team members, um, you can add checklists. So if you're working on a certain um, card, for example, if you're looking at Trello, each one of those little blocks is a card and you can put a, a extreme amounts of detail into each card, you know, as, as much as you want to add as far as um, requirements and deliverables, attachments, you can add comments. Um, so we found these tools to be really useful um, for tracking tasks as you go along. Yeah, and if you're looking at uh, Trello and, and Teams in this uh, slide, the, the cards you're seeing there are, are those 
those are part of uh, boards, Kanban boards, I, I would say. And mm -hmm. um, so that's the example of software-based Kanban. And, you know, there, there are many other tools too. These are just four. And so there's a, a lot of options out there to, to meet your needs. Yeah. And of course, file sharing. Um, <laughs> how are you going to get your documents and data from team member to team member? This is uh, really critical, especially in emergency management. And um, when you need a trail of documentation sort of supporting your work. Um, so a couple out there, you know, Google Drive, um, Office 365, OneDrive, SharePoint teams can be used to share files. Um, so yeah, there's, there's really a lot of options out there and I'm sure there's a lot more um, complicated ones for field work and, um, you know, deployment type situations, but. Yeah, yeah, and, and this has really helped, uh, you know, our teams, but, but any project team, you know, be able to you know, get to the documentation they may have, you know, oh, hey, where were those diagrams you did on that task? Or, you know, wasn't mm -hmm. there a project uh, retrospective? I, I wanna look at that now. So, you know, having a place that the team can go to has just been really, really important, especially in this distributed uh, world we're in now. And then also the, uh, the simultaneous editing uh, feature of, of, of some of these tools with being able to write Word documents or Google Docs and, and things together at the same time has, has really, again, helped improve the, the, the speed we can deliver and facilitates, uh, you know, uh, collaboration as well, which is so helpful. And I can't imagine anyone at this point in having vir been virtual for so long is not familiar with either of these, but Slack and Microsoft Teams are excellent for um, instant messaging across Teams, so. Yeah, we and certainly file sharing. spend a lot of time uh, chatting here, uh, mm -hmm. but, but it really is one of the great uh, breakthroughs, I, I can say that you know, having done project management for many years uh, before instant messaging was commonplace, uh, getting answers to what are, you know, pretty simple questions could take, could take days, even weeks. And um, now that's, you know, seems ridiculous, of course, because you can just message somebody and they can answer you in, in three seconds, or at least you know, in an hour or two, surely they will see a question and be able to answer it. So it's, it's been able to speed up uh, the flow of information and just that translates to, yeah, so I, along with, you know, document management, uh, managing code and uh, wikis and information about software uh, deliverables and, and the files necessary uh, to that make up our, our, our software projects uh, has been really helpful. Um, GitHub or GitLab or, you know, th there, are, there are others out there, Subversion, um, whatever it is, uh, having a place that, you know, the team can uh, come and, and get the correct version of uh, documentation or, or code or uh, anything like that um, for, you know, projects that, that deal with uh, you know, software development especially has been you know, transformational uh, to be honest. And, and now these can even be uh, shared with external organizations and stakeholders outside. You know, and, and we're involved in a number of open source projects, especially in the emergency management community. It's really important to be able to connect with uh, other, others who, who need this stuff and help them out and um, have documentation that backs it up. And, you know, these are, these are tools that allow people to, uh, to, to get at that information really easily. So for example, Maddie has been uh, uh, amazing in building uh, disaster models to predict damage uh, and that kind of thing that are, that are coded in, in, in Python, for example. And in some of those, you know, you, you put in GitHub and, and make available to, to, to other parties and, and that, that kind of thing is just invaluable. Mm -hmm. 
So um, one tradition in the agile process is how, holding a retrospective meeting at the end of your sprint cycle with your team. And it's sort of a feedback session um, and it's just with your, your scrum team. Um, and one thing that comes out of this um, as your team is planning each sprint and working together and holding these retrospective planning meetings is that you start to build um, a great sense of trust over time. And so um, one tool that I found really helpful when having these retrospective meetings, um, finding prompts for people to um, open up and speak to challenges they're facing or um, giving ideas for how to improve your sprint process is by using retromat.org. And um, you can just sort of click through and find different prompts or games or icebreakers, things you can do with the group to help make your retrospective meetings really um, effective and to get a lot of really useful feedback out of your team as far as how you can improve from sprint to sprint and work together um, more efficiently. Yeah, and, and the idea here is to uh, make team members comfortable to share you know, problems that they might be having. Is that right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I, traditionally these meetings are just supposed to be, you know, your close scrum team, no stakeholders, no um, product owners, no customers, it's just the people doing the work. And so um, that's supposed to foster this feeling of trust and, um, you know, willingness to talk about, you know, issues or problems or suggest solutions. Yeah, and of course, you know, this will translate down the road to a better functioning team, you know, and ultimately better products and service delivery uh, for our customers.